Hi, we're back again. And we're going to start the morning out with a, a very interesting gentleman, Chet Blum. Good morning. Good morning. So Th glad to have you here. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here. Yes, and I hear that uh, you write music. I don't write music. I actually write I actually write the lyrics. The lyrics, oh, that's important. I hear the music in my head, but I and I have to tell people what I'm hearing, uh -huh. and then they put down the melody to, oh, to the words that I, you know to whatever words I come up with. Perfect. That's perfect. What's interesting with your uh, doing this uh, work is that I saw the movie Words and Music this morning about uh, Rogers and Hart, and he was. A uh, lyricist and wrote such, right. such beautiful, beautiful lyrics. Yes, he did. All the shows yes, that he was in. So you, um, are you from this place or? Where no, I'm a, I'm originally from New York. Oh. And then I moved out here ten years ago in July of 2007. Uh huh. And I've always wanted to, when I was younger, and looking for, deciding what I wanted to do with the rest of my life. <laughs> You know, I always wanted to be a songwriter after originally having seen the Beatles on Ed Sullivan. <laughs> well, I, I mean, I kid around about it. I mean, you know, I saw all the girls in the audience screaming and everything, and I said, well, that looks like fun. Wow, well, yeah, <laughs> well, I don't blame you. Yeah, so I wanted, to, I wanted to do that, and I just found out that I'm not very good musically, but I have a, a way with words. Hmm. And... I hear the music in my head, like I can get a melody in my head that I think would work for a lyric that I come up with. And I would just try and get it to go, but I, I was not good musically enough to do it, so I mm -hmm. started looking for people, oh. you know, to do the melody. Mm -hmm. But in those days, I never found anybody. Now, how long ago was this? Uh, about, this I was guess. like, in, well, I'll give away my age, but I mean, <laughs> this, was, <laughs> this, this, this was back in, after I saw the Beatles in February of 1964. 1964. 60s were big for me, too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I had a good time, and I, I enjoyed it, and I found out that I could come up with words. Good. Which I got, I think I got from my dad. He was a tremendous writer of things. Not song lyrics and stuff, but he always had a gift with words and writing, oh. you know, and, and writing things. So I think I got that kind of from, from my dad. And I know we were talking and you were in shows. My mom was, my mom was not professional, but she mm -hmm. was like in, from our temple back home, they used to always put on shows, which were directed actually by a professional guy okay. by the name of Hal Oakley. Oh, and my great. mom would always try, and she was always a second banana. <laughs> so I think I got the, creative thing from in one way or another from the from the both of them but mm -hmm. i never met anybody that i could get, get to write a melody so i just floundered around and then you know john lennon said life life's what happens to you while you're busy making other plans <laughs> and so life went on and i kind of now today i like to just say you know the dream never died it was just kind of postponed so now i have fun and i write well, where where do people go to hear your your writing? Well, basically, my songs are on my Reverb Nation page. Oh, great! And there's a I think there's over I'm not even sure I never counted them, but I every time I do a new one or I have a new one made, I I have it you know I put it up I link it to Facebook and and let people you know listen to it and sometimes you get good comments sometimes you don't <laughs> but, <laughs> but it's fun and I'm having a great time I'm having a great time doing it and. The really fascinating thing is a lot of the songs I write, I, I actually write with people who I've never met face to face. No kidding. Yeah, I mean, today, the day and age with technology today is just absolutely fascinating, what, what, what you can do. I know, I know, it just, somebody said I did such and I said, you did what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just, it was just a, it was just a, something that just started to happen. Um, on, on, I don't have it anymore, I don't think. I've never checked, but I used to be on MySpace. Oh. And I, and I met a gentleman by the name of David Harper, who used to, I believe David used to play drums for the Righteous Brothers years ago. Wow. So I, so I used to send him lyrics that I would write. And we had always said we were going to write a song together. And somehow, he lived in Northern California at that time. Mm -hmm. And somehow that never happened, and he wound up moving to Nashville. And then he invited me down to Nashville to co-write with... Um, people that he knew down there. Nashville, wow. So, so my great bringing up of how I wrote based on Lennon and McCartney, which is more pop and what have you, uh -huh. got transferred now into more country music. 
Oh my gosh, yeah. I, I like country music. It's about the only thing I can listen to now because the other's a little bit <laughs> yeah, ahead I, of me. <laughs> I, 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 I sympathize. So I went down and um, met David, and I, I round, I, we wound up writing uh, two songs together, and I got introduced to people while I was down there. Um, a, a fascinating songwriter, Karen Staley, she wrote a couple of songs for Faith Hill. Wow. And I believe she played and toured with and sang back up for, I believe, Reba McIntyre. Sorry if I'm wrong, wow. Karen. But I think that was that. And then I met a gentleman by the name of uh, Larry Wayne Clark. Mm -hmm. And he since has passed away, but he was a fabulous, fabulous songwriter, fabulous gentleman, a musical guru. And oh. he was Canadian and um, living in Nashville at the time. Uh -huh. But he, he, uh, he had written some songs for, I believe, again, I could be wrong on this, but I believe Lee Greenwood and Anne Murray. Oh. And, you know, so I, I met some very, very interesting people. And, it was, and, I, and then it just started to evolve. And I, read, I wrote with a gentleman by the name of uh, Eric Pickle, and he introduced me to this country radio station in Ireland, of all places. <laughs> yeah, Clay's it country seem radio. Doesn't go together, does it? <laughs> <laughs> nah, I didn't think so at the time, but you know, he introduced me to uh, Clay's country radio, mm -hmm. and they had a chat room. And then in the chat room, I met all different people that musical this, musical that. Some of which weren't very good doing what I do, writing lyrics, but were good, you know, musically. Yeah. And we just started talking, and you form friendships. And then I, I started writing a song with special. Uh, the first one I met. Well, um, he lives in Alabama, actually, a gentleman by the name of Steve Owen. Mm -hmm. And we've written some, what I like to think of some really, you know, I, don't know how many, I don't know how many we've done together, but we've written a number of songs. And then you just meet a lot of different people. And then I've been lucky enough to have some people record some of the songs. All indie artists, nobody big yet, but yeah. it's been fun. It's, an, it's just an oh, education. Yes. It's just uh, an there's, education. There's nothing like the arts, I'm telling you. Uh, it's a lot of work and there's a lot of competition, but it's it's really a ball. Yeah, no, it's a lot of fun. The music industry is, it, you know, <laughs> it's an industry. <laughs> it's a music business, and it's oh, definitely. And it's a very, very tough business to crack. It's a lot different today than it was years ago. Everything with, you know, illegal or you know, downloads and Spotify and <laughs> Spotify and all these people. So it's difficult <laughs> to get songs really heard and recorded by. The top of the pot, you know, the top of the, you know, the cream of the crop, sort of, so to speak, who mm -hmm. have access to the top, pop, you know, top writers anywhere, anytime they want, anyway. So it's kind of hard to wedge in there. And I haven't had any luck doing that. But there are people that hear it and like a song and will contact me, and they yeah. record it. The gentleman by the name of Murray Williams, who's up in Canada, and a Victoria Emin from who's actually overseas, and James Linus, who's in Ireland. I mean, <laughs> today it's a. It's a small world today where people find you and hopefully but, they like your stuff and they record it. But it's great that that you can have somebody pick up something you've written and make it come to life. That that's me. I'm one of the singers, so I I I love to to make it real. You know, to to go by what the words are trying to say to tell a story. You know. Right, and that yeah, and that's just it's all part of like when I give a lyric to. Like a Steve Owen, or there's another gentleman by the name of, uh, well, he goes by J.R. Guitar Man, but his real name is John Brown. <laughs> and I'll give them lyrics, and they'll just say, well, what do you, you know, what, what do you have in mind? Mm -hmm. And then I'll, I'll just tell them upbeat, mid tempo, lead guitar, piano, this, you know, what I hear in my head. Mm -hmm. And then I, get, I wind up getting a demo back, you know, of something, and it, they'll just say, is this what you have in mind, or is this what you thought? And it's just a it's just a demo of them on guitar or piano or something, and yeah. then we and then I send back thoughts and then we'll, hopefully then we have it winds up being a finished product. Oh, that's what's so fun. That that's great. I, I tell me more about your time in New York. What what kind of things did you do in New York? Well, I I I grew up in New York. I was raised the first six years of my life in in, in Manhattan, mm -hmm. and then we moved to Queens, and I grew up in Queens and spent my Spent my entire life there and um, wound up, you know, getting married and living there and starting a you know family and get, you know and having and I started I didn't never wanted to work for anybody else I just didn't feel I'd be very good at it so I started 
my own business in New York at that time. Oh, well, great! What, was it music? No, no, no. It had nothing. I couldn't get couldn't get going in music like I had said earlier because I just oh, co I so couldn't hard. I couldn't meet anybody. Yeah. So at that in those days, you didn't have Facebook and there were, I mean there weren't any computers. <laughs> so it was just you know it was just a matter of trying to hope you bumped into somebody somehow, mm -hmm. and I never did. So I had a relative uh, who owned an insurance agency. And my dad had just passed away at that time, back in mm. 1973. Mm. And I bumped into him in Manhattan, and he gave me, a, he asked me if I was needed a job, and I went and started working for him, and eventually left him with his blessing, and went out on my own, and had my own insurance business in New York, which I still run from here <laughs> oh today. Oh my gosh! Yeah, which I, I'm kind of retired from it, or semi-retired. If something falls on my lap, I take it. But isn't that sort of hard to do from here? Or Not anymore. No, not anymore the, the because computer? everything, yeah, because everything can be scanned mm -hmm. and emailed and signatures mm, and right. and anything I'm doing, I'm getting anything that falls in my lap in that regard today, I get from a client and it's mm. a referral or something. So they know me. I don't have to like meet them face to face. Well, that's great. I think I think we all need to have something else that we can do because the arts and show business, all of those things. It's it's hard. Very few. There's a f small percentage that get up and make a lot of money, mm -hmm. and the rest of us, if we, whatever we can take at this time, I'm fine. We, but we got to have something to pay the rent with. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, exactly. And I, you know, that's why I just started that business. I, well, I went to work for this gentleman by the name Joe Lempert was his name, and mm -hmm. uh, he gave me my start. And, I always, you know, he's passed away, but I always used to tell him that I, I owe my, I owe my life to him. <laughs> yeah, you know, but he gave me a start and being able to do what I did at that time. Yeah. And uh, I built the business up and worked it and made it successful. And then I decided that now I'm semi-retired from that. I just work at when I have to. Mm -hmm. And. Now I'm doing what I always wanted to do, which is write songs. So that's why I always said that you know the dream of writing songs it never it never died. It was just kind of like put on hold or, post oh, right. or postponed. And that's what I that's what I just have a lot a lot of fun a lot of fun doing. That's right because that's something that somebody else can't do easily. I mean it's something you have to, that you have it and nobody can do it the way you do it. Yeah, like like my wife is a tremendous artist. And oh really? Yeah, she loves, and she's a, and she's a heck of an author also. But she she wrote a book on her own. We wrote two, two together, but we, she wrote one on her own also. And getting them published is another story. But but she's very very talented, and she draws, and paint, and, she, and it, a lot of her artwork is hanging in our home. She's fabulously talented. I can't I can't do that. I mean, there's just no way I can't do that. Why at all. Why isn't she here? You got to get her here so we can interview <laughs> Send her. Send her an invite. I'll mention it to okay, her. Okay, definitely. Because you know we're trying to do just more, a little bit more than just an interview. We're trying to promote people. We're trying to come back and come back, and people get to know you. And you never know. Like you say, you just meet somebody accidentally, and it, it turns into something great. Yeah. No. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's fa you, know, you know she's fabulously talented, and I, I can't, I can't. I can't attempt to do what she does, you know, draw, <laughs> drawing and things, and the detail and the way she makes her look. And but I bet she can't write song lyrics. She is. She's. <laughs> she, oh I'm not no, sure. she does that too. <laughs> no, she doesn't write song lyrics per se, but she. Good she's a very writer. gifted. She's a very gifted mm -hmm. lady, and she has a way with words. I mean, she's written a book on her own. Yeah, you know, she has a way with words, and she's very good at putting down her thoughts, on paper, mm -hmm. and more sometimes in the form of poems but a lot of times mm -hmm. but a lot of times just in um, characters mm -hmm. and in a book and developing a, and developing a story and writing about that's it that's a big talent that's yeah she's talent. very she's extremely talented that's really super so tell everybody again your uh, where they can hear your music it's www.reverbnation.com backslash my name Chet a Blum songwriter. It's all Great. one. It's all one word, but it's long. <laughs> but that's all I could come up with at the time I set it up. So. Yeah. Well, that's wonderful because I'm sure a lot of people, after hearing from you and hearing about your talent, that 
they were going to want to hear the music. So I hope so. They can do that. And if I'm going to tell you, audience, if you didn't get that written down, just get in touch with us, and we'll tell you about Chet A. Bloom. Thank you so much. I thank you very much. It's been a pleasure. Thank you for inviting me. I'm not kidding about your wife now. Tell her. (laughs) We'd like to have her on. (laughs) I will tell her. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Very much. We'll be right back.